So, so when you are connected to the holy, you're not limited to just reach for the stars. But when you're connected to the holy, you have been authorized to reach for the heavens. Reach for the heavens in your health, your finances, your relationships, your business endeavors. Spiritually, reach for the heavens. So, 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 so that's why we say prosperity is in your hands. Because you can reach for the heavens. Now, now, this is the position of a non-believer who only want to reach for the star. It didn't seem like all those that was cool, they really didn't have nothing. They just looked at cool. They was like this, you know. And they did their little shoulders like that, stand a little cool. And really, the body language was really telling you ladies, I don't have nothing, so don't be looking at me. <laughs> my pockets are empty. That's why my hands are in them. And my shoulders are saying no because my head is tired of saying no. Y'all know I just made that up, right? <laughs> it sounded good, though. God, it sounded good. <sighs> so many people, they miss their blessings when it comes to prosperity. They missed it. They missed it. You don't have to claim lack when it comes to any subject. Now, let me help you out on this note too because this is the trick of the enemy and the enemy has been trying to work his thing concerning this subject, including sickness. Don't claim it. Now, I got to get this little disclaimer because I don't want nobody, you know, to take stuff all out of context. Well, pastor said, don't take my medicine no more. And then, you know, <laughs> pastor didn't say that now. Now, if God tell you that, then you, you stop taking it. But I believe that he probably wants some confirmation from the doctor. He didn't give him all that intelligence for nothing, you know. <laughs> People will put it on the pastor in a minute. They'd be sitting up in ICU and everything. And Pastor said, I heard him. I said, you don't have to claim lack, and even when it comes to your health. Because a diagnosis is just a diagnosis. Can I help y'all for a minute? Uh, I was visiting with my buddy. Y'all know who my buddy is, right? Webster. I was visit visiting my buddy this morning, and he said this. When it comes to a diagnosis, he said, it's the process of determining by examination the nature and circumstances of a disease condition. So, so listen, your diagnosis is not a death sentence. Oh, oh, oh. When you take your car in, you take it in to get a what? Diagnosis. How many of you are still driving that same car today? And it's still getting you to where you want to go. The engine is still purring in that same car. So what I'm telling you today that sometimes uh, you go through a season to whereas you are misdiagnosed, but then the Holy has to come and heal your body just to prove a point that he is the healer if you let him. So, so you have a choice. You have a choice. Uh, you can start living or you can get busy dying. That's one from my favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> it's long, but it's worth watching. Amen. Make you don't want to ever go to jail. Amen. That's, it's just a reminder to keep me, you know, intact, not to be losing my mind and then have to be, uh, you know, being your pastor, you know, teleprompting and all that. Y'all be watching me on the screen. You know, amen. 
So, so listen, I do hear you. You say, well, how can you say that, Pastor? Well, listen, know this. Concerning your diagnosis and concerning the fact that a diagnosis is not a death sentence, know this. God is not an executioner. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, you will speak things into your life and take your own self out. You, you worry about what other people are saying. What, about, what are you saying? Are you saying that you're blessed and highly favored? Or are you saying, woe is me? You better get out of that conversation with the negative you. Well, brother pastor, how do I put um, uh, me, myself, and I on the same page? Put them in the same place spiritually. But if you're allowing me to tip out and break a loose from myself and I, it's a good chance that me is not going to be a person of faith. When myself and I cannot move without me. So, so, so we kill ourselves first in the mind. That's where we kill ourselves first, in the mind. And then guess what? The body follows. It's no different than sin. We sin first in the mind. And then the body follows. If you don't have any self-control, the body is going to follow. And you wonder, how did I get here? Because it started in your mind. Before you lit it up, fired it up, met up, whatever up, that took you down. It started in the mind. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. Well, uh, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. I can't stay there long, so y'all can just write that no, down. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things <laughs> that thou mayest prosper. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? The word of God said, I wish above all things, all things, that thou May is prosper. Say, that's me. <laughs> the word is talking to me today. It said, and be in health. So, those of you who was claiming sickness when you came in, I wish above all things that thou may prosper. So it says, and be in health. So it's not God's plan for us to be sick. We become sick because we are disobedient with how we are treating the body that God gave to us. I'm a living witness. Just recently, because I, I hadn't been eating right, I haven't relapsed back to five guys. But don't you know there's a whole bunch of other guys that'll mess your body up too. <laughs> they were some strong substitutes. But I hadn't been eating right and I dealt with that pneumonia for three weeks in a row. And God was speaking to my spirit is like saying, see there, you being disobedient. You know? He said, yeah, you, you done lost 10 pounds, but it's not how you wanted to lose it. God will show you what he's working with. And what I mean by that, he'll get your attention, not make you sick. You make your own self sick, but he'll get your attention that you spoke it in your life or you caused it to come upon you based off of how uh, you're doing that which I have blessed you with, which is the temple of the living God. Y'all receive that? So, so it says, listen, May is, may is prosper and be in health. 
even as thy soul prospereth. Now, can I share this with you? And is it okay? I mean, really, is it okay? Y'all ready for this? It said, listen, when you think about it, prosperity and purpose goes hand in hand. When you are living in your purpose, your prosperity is connected to your purpose. I see I, one person said I received that. T -t Touch your neighbor and tell them, say, you need to know your purpose. Say, your purpose is connected to your prosperity. Mm. <laughs> Woo. Listen, listen, God created man in his image. Meaning, listen, God took the time to work it. He didn't create the animals, the cattle, the fowl, the fishes in his image. But there is something unique about us that with the others, he spoke it. But he put his hands to us. So, so what are you saying to me today, Brother Pastor? That if you have disconnected yourself seemingly from the holy, you have walked away from him, all you have to do is put yourself back up on the potter's wheel and allow him to remake you all over again. Look, 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 look. Then he says, in the image of God created he, him, male and female, He created them. That's why we're so unique and different. We are not connected. So if he created you as a male, you cannot choose to be a female. Vice versa. He created you as a female. You can't go on the other side. So, so when we look at this, mm, Jesus, look at the text. Verse 28 says, and God blessed them. Now notice it's talking in the context of a couple. Why? Because I got to help you with these next portions here. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Be fruitful. And mo he wasn't talking to you singles. Your day of having children out of wedlock is over if you want to be blessed. Close the shop up. If you close the shop up, won't nothing come out of it. But he said, be fruitful and multiply. So let me help you again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For those of you who just single, he said, but I can't find the right one. That's the problem, ladies. You better stop looking. Just tell a lady next to you. I don't know if she's single or married, whatever. If you're married, don't worry about it. It ain't for you. Say, listen, he'll find you. But first, say first things first. You have to find yourself. God is not ever, never, 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 never 
going to send Boaz to someone who is broke, busted, emotionally disgusted, can't, don't have their thoughts together, their house is nasty. You don't need a husband, you need a, a lesson on house cleaning. You clean your house, you'll clean your mind. But then, but then look at what it says. It said, and subdue it. Subdue it, meaning to bring under mental and emotional control. To subdue it. God's not going to put us over nothing and we can't uh, uh, do things right when it comes to, it's still his creation. But when we work in, in purpose, and connected to our prosperity, guess what? He said we'll be able to subdue it. So if one is out of control mentally, then they're operating outside the plan and purpose that God has for their life. If you're, if you're out of control emotionally, it's simple. You're operating outside of the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. So... <laughs> Mm. Can I just add this? I'm hit, I'm done. Listen. Mm. Your money will never, ever be right until you get your mind right. 